Hey everybody, Geometry Unit 4, CP1, Lesson 5. Uh, apparently, I'm really good at spelling circles. Uh, so let's just insert an R there, that's really good, good job. Uh, objectives for this lesson, check it out. Determine missing angles in kites. Determine angles and segment lengths formed by the diagonals of a kite. Name parts of tri or trapezoids. Determine missing angles and some relationships with diagonals within trapezoids. Uh, let's just go ahead and get it started. How about that? All right, a couple items you need to be aware of with regard to kites. Uh, and I wouldn't call these kite properties. I would just call this, uh, you know, kites in general. We're going to talk about the parts uh, with some vocabulary. Let's call this vocab ulary. Okay, <clears throat> so within a kite, we've already studied this, we've got a quadrilateral with two distinct consecutive pair of congruent sides, right? So I've got congruent sides next to each other, which is the uh, consecutive congruent, right? Consecutive congruent, and they're distinct from each other, right? So this pairing and this pairing are not the same. Okay, so in between the consecutive congruent sides, we have vertex angles. There you go, vertex angle, vertex angle. Between non-congruent sides, we have what's called a non-vertex angle. Okay, and we're gonna talk about some properties there. Here are the diagonals of a kite. Okay, this red segment and the green segment, connecting non-consecutive vertices. Uh, so those are our diagonals. All right, let's get in some properties with regards to those in a moment. Okay, so a conjecture is uh, is basically an educated guess, right? It's based on uh, what we can see or what we already know. Now, I'm going to uh, give you a bunch of information with regards to uh, the kite and its diagonals and all that good stuff with regards to the vocabulary we just talked about. So I'm going to draw the two diagonals. And they're not perfect, but there you go. Oops, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so a few things. The diagonals of a kite. Right? Some cool stuff that happens on. They do the following. They are perpendicular to each other. They are perpendicular to each other. That means we form a right angle right here in all four of those corners. Okay, the other thing that a diagonal does within a kite is it bisects the vertex angles. Watch this. This is cool. Okay, so it cuts this angle, right? Let's call this angle A. It cuts it in half perfectly, where those two angles are the same measure. Let's say this was angle B over here. It cuts this angle perfectly in half. It also, the diagonals of the kite, also do the following. Okay, They form uh, reflectional symmetries. Okay, so symmetries, for example, this angle right here is congruent to this angle right here. So if I folded vertex C down to vertex D, those two would match up perfectly. Likewise here, these two angles end up equaling as well. There's one more property, okay? And the, the uh, diagonal uh, coming from the non-vertex angles, so the diagonal connecting Uh, the non-vertex angles, excuse me, the vertex angles. Okay, so let me highlight that in a moment here. All right, let's do this. The diagonal connecting the non-vertex angles from here to here. Excuse me, the vertex angles. My goodness, I can't stop. Bisects the diagonal connecting 
non-vertex angles. All right, so let's see that in action here. Okay, here's the diagonal connecting the non-vertex angles in green. The red segment cuts that in half. A lot of symmetry going on. If I were to call this triangle one, it's congruent in all facets to triangle two. And if this were triangle three, likewise to triangle four. Lots of symmetry going on there with kites. Let's continue. All right, let's do the same here with some uh, vocab talk on trapezoids. Okay, so let's emphasize something here. We've got one pair of parallel lines. This is a quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides. That's a trapezoid by definition. Okay, so we call these two lengths. Let's go this length in red and this other length in red. These are the two bases. Okay, those are the bases of the trapezoid. Okay. There are two pair of base angles. Here's a pair of base angles. We don't know whether or not those base angles are congruent measure yet. Okay, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. And there's another pair of base angles. Okay, and likewise, we don't know if those are congruent yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about some properties of trapezoids using this vocab. So a conjecture, again, educated guess. If, like I have said, my two bases are parallel to each other, let's say, for example, that I continued this line here and that line there. Okay, in an effort to see the relationship between A and B. Okay, so A would be corresponding with this angle. I guess I could call this, uh, let's call this angle X. Okay, now, if A and X correspond, that means measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle X. Now, you notice here also that the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle X is 180. So, if measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle X, then I can say that the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle A should be equal to 180 degrees. Okay, I could do the same thing in the other direction. Here's angle B. Here is its uh, corresponding angle with regards to the parallel lines. And you could say angle B and angle Y are equal. Uh, therefore, the measure of angle Y and measure of angle A add up to 180, and thus measure of angle A plus measure of angle B equals 180. So you could do it either way. And if you're hypothesizing, you're absolutely right. The measure of angle C plus the measure of angle D will always, regardless if this is a trapezoid, that will always add up to 180. Let's look at this property in an example. All right, so let's take a look at this trapezoid on the left. Notice that, yes, we have one pair of parallel sides, and we also have these sides congruent. What that does to our trapezoid is it kind of squares it up. What it does is it now makes our base angles congruent to each other. We always knew that the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle D was equal to 180. Right? We knew that from the slide before. The measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C is 180. But the moment that we put these isosceles markings on this trapezoid, that's what an isosceles trapezoid is. If the non-base side lengths are congruent, that's called an isosceles trapezoid. Now what we have is that the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B. So there's a nice vertical symmetry, reflectional symmetry, right down the middle of this trapezoid. Okay, so we now have that property. Another property within the isosceles trapezoid, same situation, same situation, we got a trapezoid with non-base sides congruent. These green lengths are diagonals. What happens is that the diagonal here from A to C and the diagonal from B to D 
are equal in length. So the distance from A to C is equal to the distance from B to D. Okay? Um, so it's, it's a very interesting property that we can utilize uh, within uh, the trapezoid. So let's use it practically in some examples. All right, so if you were in class, and for that matter, you can pause the video and do it just like we would in class. I would give you 10 minutes for the following six problems. Uh, you can pause the video. I'm just going to continue to work. Okay, so find X in the following diagrams. So I'm going to look here. I'm going to see that these are non-vertex angles. Therefore, I'm going to name this angle X. And within a quadrilateral, I know the four side, or the four angles within a quadrilateral add to 360. So I should add 2X plus 100 plus 70, which is 170. Therefore, uh, if I subtract 170, I get 190 is equal to 2X. And when I divide by 2, I get 95 degrees. That tells me the measure of angle X. Likewise, very similarly, in the second example, I know non-vertex angles are congruent, and I know the four angles in a quadrilateral add to 360. So 360 is equal to x plus, I'm going to take 100, 165, add them together, and when I subtract, I get x equals 95 here as well. That's very interesting how those two matched up so well there. Okay, let's look at some symmetry within kites. Okay, of course, this is a kite. I can see based on the two distinct pair of consecutive congruent sides. Therefore, I know this angle would be 90, so x must be 90. I know there's a symmetry here between these two angles, so y would be 52. Also, I know w and z are going to be the same. I don't know what those are yet, but I can find them. So if I look at this triangle here, I see a right triangle. And then I know the three angles within a right triangle, which currently are 66 and 90 and W. Those should all add up to give me 180. Okay, so if I add these two together, I get 156. And then I subtract 156, I get 24 degrees. So W, oh wow, I screwed that up. Way to go. X is 90, not W. W is 24. X is 90, and Z and W are the same, so it should also be 24. Okay, uh, let's look at the fourth example here. Um, I know that these two angles, by symmetry within a kite, and their diagonals should be the same, so Z should be 70. This is more visual than it is calculated. Uh, these two angles are going to be 30. So y is 30 degrees, and then I know I've got a 90 degree angle here. And thus, x, 30, and 90 should add up to 180. Okay, now, now practically, if I know, if I have a right triangle, then the two acute angles should sum to 90. Right, so if you look at these three angles, so I got an x, I got a 30, and I got a 90. Well, I know the three of them have to add up to 180. If I took away 90, these two would have to add to the other 90. Therefore, x plus 30, that's always true in a right triangle. Right triangle, make sure it's a right triangle. That means x should equal 60 degrees. Awesome. Let's look at one more example here. Actually, two more, excuse me. All right, notice... In this fifth example, I don't have an isosceles trapezoid, right? I don't have the markings here and here. Thus, all that I know is that x and 75 equals 180, and y and 65 equals 180. So x should equal 105, and y should equal 115. Okay, now, though, I square up... Uh, this trapezoid in the last example, it's isosceles. You can see by the markings here and here. Therefore, my base angles should be congruent, so x should be 120, and y should be 60. All right, guys, that's it for lesson five. Uh, we'll see you in the next video.